Hi, this is the first of three example videos where we explore the process of taking a given matrix, changing the basis for the underlying vector space so that the matrix of the corresponding operator is now going to be in upper triangular form. So we're going to start easy, we're going to start with a 2x2 two two matrix. And the idea is going to be to use something that we saw in the proof that every operator over a complex vector space has an eigenvalue. If you want to see that proof, click on the button right here. Okay, so let's get started. We have here a matrix representing an operator T over R2. And we would like to change the basis, which we, we don't know at the start, but we want to find some basis so that the matrix is no longer just some arbitrary 2x2 two two matrix, but one which is in upper triangular form. So here's how we're going to start. We're going to choose a non-zero vector in the vector space. Uh, okay, how about 1, 0? I'm going to give it a name U. And I'm going to apply the operator T to this vector until I get a list which is linearly dependent. All right, so the first time I apply the operator, I'll get TU. And while applying the operator is the same as multiplying this matrix by a column vector, that would give me 1 and 0 is 1, and then 4 and 0 is 4. All right, so I notice here that the new vector I get, 1, 4, is not a multiple of 1, 0, and of course 1, 0 is not a multiple of 1, 4, which means that these are not yet linearly dependent are actually linearly independent. In fact, they form a basis for the vector space R2. All right, so we've got to keep going. And we find t squared u. All right, so we have to apply this matrix to this vector now. Uh, I get 1 and 12 is 13. 4 and 8 is 12. All right, well, since u, t, u is already a basis for R2, we must have a linearly independent list now or linearly dependent list now. So, let's see how we do it. If I want to get t squared u, then, let's see, well, I'm going to need three fours to give me 12, so I better put three t u's in. And let's see, I need to get 13. I already have three, so I'm going to need 10 more. All right, so this tells me that t squared u is equal to three t u's plus 10 u's. All right, I put everything on one side, and that tells me that 0 is equal to t squared minus 3t uh, minus 10i applied to u. Now, I can factor this. In fact, I can factor it in a couple of ways, if you allow me to change order. One way I can factor this is as t minus 5i applied to t minus 2i applied to u. If you multiply this out, you see, okay, t squared, uh, well, this would be a, a plus 2i, excuse me, t squared minus 3i and then minus 10, uh, minus 3t and then minus 10i. Okay, of course, I could swap the order here. So that's another way I can go. Uh, I could do t plus 2i after t minus 5i evaluated at u. Now, why do I write it in two different ways? What's the point? Well, first, note, when I apply t plus 2i to u, I cannot possibly get 0. If you don't believe it, just check it, but it really can't. Why? Well, because if you could, then I would have had a linear combination of t, u, and u being 0, which we, we said can't happen, right? They're not linearly dependent. Similarly, t minus 5i applied to u, that can't be 0 either, because again, t, u, and minus 5u, those can't be 0 because t, u, and u were not linearly dependent. All right, so that means I have a non-zero vector here and a non-zero vector here. On the other hand, each one of these was a factorization of this element, which was equal to 0. So that equals 0, and this one equals 0 which means when I take this element and plug it into this operator, I end up with 0. So this is in the null space of t minus 5i. That means 5 is an eigenvalue. So if I put this together, I get as an, eigen an eigenpair, 5 is the eigenvector, and the eigenvalue is, or eigenvector is t plus 2i applied to u. 
All right, well, that shouldn't be hard to figure out. Uh, let's see, t applied to u is just 1, 4. And if I add 2u to it, I just have to add 2, 0. So that becomes 2 plus 1 is 3 over 4. So 3, 4. So 3, 4 is an eigenvector for the eigenvalue 5. Okay, well, what about over here? Well, we knew this was equal to 0, which means that t minus 5i applied to u is in the null space of t plus 2i. So negative 2 is now an eigenvalue, and we'll get an eigenpair. Negative 2 comma, okay, well, what is this? If I have to do tu, which is 1, 4, minus 5u, so that'd just be minus 5 up here. 1 minus 5 is negative 4, and 4 minus 0 is going to be 4. So negative 4 comma 4 is going to be an eigenvector for the eigenvalue negative 2. All right, well, now we have distinct eigenvalues. We have eigenvectors for those distinct eigenvalues. So we know that the list 3 comma 4 and negative 4 comma 4 is going to give me a linearly independent set and hence a basis because it has the right length. Okay, so what will the matrix then be? Well, if I write down the matrix of T with respect to this new basis, 3, 4, negative 4, 4, the matrix will be well, let's see. If we put 3, 4 here and negative 4, 4 there, 3, 4, negative 4, 4. I apply t to both of these. Well, we already know that these are eigenvectors. So if I apply t to 3, 4, since it came from the eigenvalue 5, it's just 5 times itself. And if I apply t to negative 4, 4, so well, since it's an eigenvector for negative 2, it'll just be negative 2 times itself. And so I end up with an upper triangular, even a diagonal matrix. Right. In the next video, we're going to look at a similar example, only it'll be 3 by 3. And then in the final video, we'll look at one which is 4 by 4. If you want to look at the 3 by 3, click here.